This Week at NASA. Three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff of a Delta II rocket and WISE. With that, the Delta II rocket carrying NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer made its way off the launch pad at California's Vandenberg Air Force Base. Using extremely sensitive infrared cameras, WISE will spend nine months mapping the sky in search of the nearest and coolest stars, clues to the origins of stellar and planetary systems, and the universe's most luminous galaxies. Amy Mainzer is WISE's deputy project scientist. In addition to finding some of the most distant objects in the universe, it's also going to find some of those that are closest to our own home, our, in our own solar system, and that is the asteroids. WISE will orbit the Earth about 15 times a day, mapping the sky one and a half times during its planned nine-month mission. You are clear back to 30 degrees bank. And NASA's Stratospheric <laughs> Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA aircraft, took to the skies above California's Mojave Desert on its first flight since January 2008. The modified 747, carrying a German-built telescope for infrared astronomy research, flew about four and a half hours during a functional check flight in restricted airspace near Edwards Air Force Base and the Dryden Flight Research Center. The flight evaluated the aircraft's performance, handling characteristics, and flight systems at altitudes up to 35,000 feet and included a checkout of aircraft systems including engine, flight controls, and communication. Two additional flights are scheduled for later in the month to evaluate the doors covering the observatory's telescope cavity. SOFIA will first fly with 10% of its telescope's cavity door open, and then later with 100% of the telescope revealed. Three, two, one. How do you make a helicopter safer? Well, you crash it. Researchers at the Langley Research Center recently dropped an old helicopter from a height of 35 feet to see whether an expandable honeycomb cushion attached to its belly could ease the destructive force of a crash. NASA aerospace engineer Karen Jackson oversaw the test. One of the concepts is to look at exterior deployed systems like either airbags or this concept that we tested today as a way of providing energy attenuation without adding a lot of weight. The test conditions imitated what would be a relatively severe helicopter crash. On impact, the helicopter's skids bent outward, but the cushion, called a deployable energy absorber, kept the rotorcraft's bottom from touching the ground. Four crash test dummies along for the ride appeared only a little worse for wear. Researchers must analyze the test results before they can be sure the deployable energy absorber worked as designed. It's an honor for me to be here. That was NASA Administrator Charles Bolden as guest speaker at a luncheon with members of Women in Aerospace. WIA is an organization dedicated to expanding women's opportunities for leadership, increasing their visibility in the aerospace community, and facilitating discussion of issues important to women. In the area of science, technology, and aerospace, we also have more diversity at top levels than in the past. A few examples, of course, at NASA. I'm proud to have Lori Garver as my deputy administrator. WIA organizes numerous events featuring speakers from government, industry, education, and the scientific community. The Marshall Space Flight Center officially ushered in its holiday season with a special tree lighting ceremony. Dozens of team members braved chilly temperatures outside Building 4200 to watch Center Director Robert Lightfoot flip the switch for the annual event. The crowd, which included children from Marshall's Child Development Center, sang carols, enjoyed hot cocoa and sweets, and rubbed elbows with St. Nick himself. And that's This Week at NASA. Happy Holidays!